Hey guys, it's Blaze. Today, as you can tell by the title, the video I'm doing for you guys is products I regret buying in 2016. As we're saying goodbye to 2016, I'm saying goodbye to all these products because for one reason or another, I regret buying them. Funnily enough, as you can tell. <laughs> um, I'm filming in a new location here because I thought I would really love it, but I don't. So from the next video, it will go back to my normal location over the other side of the room because I thought it'd be really pretty with like these drawers and like my candle and stuff but I'm just at the wrong height so it doesn't really look very good so from the next video I will be switching back also that mirror is like making the light really bad does that help at all? not really I don't know <laughs> um, yeah so I don't really like this location very much so I'll be moving back to the other side of the room I could, could just do it now but I'm all set up so here we are okay so let's just get right into it because I don't want to make this too long and then be really boring so I've got four five categories um face so bases and um bases and foundations and powders and all that kind of thing eyes lips face as in like bronzery blushery things and then brushes I've not got a lot for the last two categories so which means I've done well and I've bought stuff that I actually like this year but um means this video might be a little bit boring towards the end but hopefully not so we're going to jump right into it so I'll start with drugstore and move to high end so the first product I regret buying is from Barry M it's the flawless brightening primer in the purple one so this is used for dull skin, it's pore minimising, smoothing and mattifying and I hate this primer. Um, I have the green one, I love it, the colour correcting one, I feel like it does wonders for my skin. Not wonders, it's not a, a marvel but um, yeah, I feel like it does correct my skin and that made it look like I had a really severe contour. Um, the green one I find really good, the purple one I bought because I loved the green one so much I thought like why not try the purple one. I don't like it, it doesn't do any kind of brightening or colour correcting as it is advertised that it does. Um, it doesn't even hold my makeup that well, I don't know how the formula can be so different in just two different colours but I really regret buying this. It was only I think four or five pounds so it's not a lot to spend but um, as you can tell from the bottom I have tried to use it but I really don't like it and I won't be using that again. The product I have to show you is the L'Oreal Nude Magique CC Cream in green, um, the colour correcting one. And I love green colour correcting things because as I'm really pale, um, the red redness in my skin shows up a lot more than um, someone who's tanned, I assume. Um, so I always look out for new ones on the market or ones that I want to try and I thought I'd give this a go. Um, it's got SPF 20 in it which um, made me really want to try it. Um, yeah, I was just looking for like a really good primer so this is what it looks like. But what I didn't realise is that it, <laughs> I should have realised when I read the back it said flawless coverage but I thought using the primer would give you flawless coverage. Uh, perfectly even skin tone, fresh dewy glow. 24 hour hydration SPF 20 um, yeah I just thought it would be a, a good primer but um, when you use it so you can see the green there um, but when you blend it in probably use too much um, it goes it's really hard to show it's like a lot darker than my skin tone um, and it doesn't come in any other uh, colours, so you don't have like light, medium, dark, it just is that one shade. Um, I didn't even attempt to put my foundation over it because <laughs> I put it on my face and was horrified by the, the colour that I went. <laughs> um, I was not expecting to be tanned and then that happened. So yeah, I'm really disappointed. I paid like £10 for this and I was really excited to try it but it just made me go orange so I'm really annoyed by that. I might try it again and put my foundation over the top but it seems a bit silly to me to layer my foundation over like orange. <laughs> so yeah I'm a bit annoyed by that so yeah. Next one is a higher end product it is the pore professional primer from benefit um, this is a not a sample size but um, 
I don't know, it's not, not a sample but not a full size, it's like a little in between, I think it's like travel or something. They sell these um, by the counter on the way, by the counter? In the queue up bit on the way to the till at Boots, this is where I got this from, it cost me 9 95 and I'd say I've used about half of the bottle and I was really careful when I first got it to not use too much because I thought I'd love it but I don't love it. Oh, I've got that annoying green primary stuff everywhere now. <laughs> Um, the reason I don't like this is that I don't find it minimises my pores at all, I don't find it holds my makeup well and I'm quite disappointed, I thought being Benefit I would love it, it's like such a notoriously good brand, I thought I'd really enjoy this product but I really am a bit disappointed by it, it didn't live up to my expectations so I am in the market for a really good primer because as you can tell I'm not having a lot of luck so if you can suggest a really good primer let me know in the comments down below and I'll definitely check them out because <laughs> I'm having a lot of trouble with primers right now. So um, my next, I'm going to have to get a wipe, this is really irritating me. So <laughs> the next product I want to talk about is a MAC foundation. This is the MAC Studio Fix Fluid with SPF 15 in the shade NW13. Um, this is a repurchase for me, I had it before, um, not with a pumpy thing, <laughs> and then I bought the pumpy thing this time. And um, the only reason I regret buying this is due to the colour. Um, the actual formula I love, I love the smell of this foundation, I don't know what it is, it just smells really good. Oh, I just broke my... No! I broke the pumpy thing. I just wanted to smell it. Oh, this is so unfair. No. Oh, here we go. It just smells like makeup, that smell to me is makeup. Oh, it's so good. But, um, so, <laughs> the reason I regret it is the colour. This is the colour in MAC they informed me to get, so I did, trust in their expertise and all, and um, it's too dark for me, and I, I think <laughs> maybe the the lovely, what, are they a beautician, are they a technician, uh, are they makeup artists, I don't, the assistant in the shop informed me this was the correct colour to buy, and I think that lovely little lady was trying to put a bit of colour in my cheeks. Um, this is the colour, so hard, it's just, it's a lot darker, I know it's on my hand, not my face, but um, it's just a lot darker than my skin tone, and I'm pretty sure there's only one shade lighter than that anyway, but um, yeah, I'm just pretty disappointed that I bought the colour I was informed to buy and it wasn't the right one, so I have tried to work with it, and if I mix it with my Illamasqua Skin Base it looks really good, but for like two really expensive foundations to mix together is just not cost effective at all so I don't use that anymore um, but the coverage is really good and the actual formula is really good so I do like that but I wouldn't buy that shade ever again <laughs> and then my last product in the face category is Max Pro Longwear Pressed Powder um, I don't remember how much this is, it's anywhere between like 16 and 21 pounds <laughs> that sounds like I'm just pulling numbers out of the air but I can't remember um, that's in the shade Light and I had one of these before but I dropped it and smashed it so I decided to rebuy it but I couldn't remember which one I had so um, I bought the, like I said, the Pro Longwear pressed powder um, the more expensive of the options there so I thought, you know, it must be good and it <laughs> doesn't seem to do anything like you can't even tell that I'm swatching it it just seems like the most pointless thing like I've swatched it and you can't see it. I literally paid 20, between 15 and 20 pounds for nothing, for no pigment, nothing. <laughs> I'm really annoyed by this powder. Like I love MAC as a brand, it's a really good brand, but it just seems to be they're letting me down at the moment. Um, I don't know if I got like a dud one or what, I don't know, but this is really bad and I wouldn't rebuy this. I hate these videos because I feel really negative, like there's so much makeup I love. These are just the little bits I found that don't work for me. Um, so my next category is eyes and I've got two gel eyeliners here to talk about by Barry M. Um, I have one in the white shade, I don't think they have numbers or anything. No. No numbers or like names or anything. So I have one in white and one in blue. Um, I thought they would be really cool and I was really excited to try them but the formula is just so stiff. I know it's a gel eyeliner, not a like a liquid or anything but you can just 
there's your little pot and you can barely get anything out it's just so stiff and then the bit you do get out is so <laughs> how do I allow you to see this there you go you can see it there it's just it's awful it doesn't come out properly it's so dry um, I definitely don't recommend these gel eyeliners they were about 450 each I think maybe five pounds and I just don't like them the blue is the same it's not just the white the blue is the same as well so I'm really disappointed by that purchase another product in the eyes category is an eyeshadow and this is from NYX and I'm really 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 disappointed by this because I was so excited to get this shade like as soon as I knew NYX was coming to the UK I was like yes um, I think it was Drac Makins I first saw use this um, shade and it is SOS and um, I was really hoping to use it as a contour because of the ashy kind of tone and I was really excited to use this but it has no colour pale it doesn't seem to do anything and I think that's the problem with most of these um, products that I'm showing you it doesn't seem to pay off there's no real pigment there um, I can get pigment when I first use it on my finger um, but that's the most pigment you'll ever get like it doesn't seem to translate well it doesn't seem to come off on a brush or on your skin at all so I'm really disappointed by this product because it the colour is perfect it's a gorgeous colour but I don't get any kind of payoff so I'm really disappointed by this one and then my last one um, in the eyes category is another MAC product <laughs> I feel so bad um, it's the Haughty and Naughty 2 Black Lash, um, so you've got two parts to the mascara and the only reason I regret buying this, it is a good mascara, this was my first high-end mascara I ever tried and I loved it the only reason I regret buying this is because I bought it too soon I bought it, used it for about a week and then I got a sample of Perversion by Urban Decay and that like smashes everything, that is like my favourite mascara of all time and this just kind of has been made redundant and the only reason it's made it into this video is because it's just not as good as perversion. That's that's it really. <laughs> like I bought it and I didn't need it. So, yep. <laughs> My next category is lips and I have some really disappointing products here and I'm really very upset by this. <laughs> so the first one is the Pout and Prime Smoothing Lip Primer by Makeup Academy. Um, it doesn't prime anything really. I thought this would be good as a base under like liquid lipsticks because they can be quite drying. So I thought it'd be really good to prime my lips with and it's just a glorified lip balm it doesn't really it doesn't give any sticking power any staying power like the the mac lip primer works really well this is just vaseline <laughs> marketed as a primer and i'm a bit annoyed by that and it was only two pounds so it's not like i wasted a lot but i just think it doesn't live up to what it should and the next two are two nyx soft matte lip creams and I, I like really interesting colours in lip products, that's what I find the most fun, um, is like the interesting colours. So I bought Moscow and Havana, so a blue and a purple. And I'm really disappointed by both colours because the pigment is awful. In the picture, um, I don't know what it's like in the, the NYX counter near you, but the one near me has all the, li all the lipsticks laid out in a row and then the pictures underneath of what they look like. Um, so I was really excited to find these cool colours but um, on trying them out they are nothing like the ones used so this is with one swipe of each and it's so faded and just not pigmented at all and it's really sheer and if you if you are to put it on your lips it's like you know when you eat sweets and it kind of like you have like the tint of the sweets you've eaten it like tints your lips that's these should be lip tints not not soft matte lip creams because it doesn't do anything and even if you try and build on the color it doesn't do anything it's just more and more sheer and I'm really disappointed by these because I was so excited to be able to buy NYX cosmetics in the UK and I'm really disappointed I have other NYX lip products which worked really well but just not the soft matte lip creams, so I don't recommend these Next category, I've only got one product, which is the face one. So it's one blusher. It's the Essence Silky Touch Blush in the shade 10 Adorable. And this is not a very pigmented shade at all, which I'm really disappointed by because the colour is so adorable, like the name. I thought it'd be a really sweet colour, and I'm not really a blush person, so this is... I only have three blushes, and um, I bought this because the other two aren't very good, so I wanted to try another one. And I don't want to spend a lot on a blush because I rarely use them. It's just not pigmented at all. 
like you can see a tiny bit of colour but it doesn't translate well onto the face and it doesn't even, <laughs> doesn't swatch well. Um, yeah, so I'm disappointed by that shade. The last product I've got to show you is a brush and this is from Morphe and it's the M430 brush. Um, so it's like a, a pointed blendy brush thingy, <laughs> really um, technical term there. And I'm really disappointed because Morphe is such a great brand. The eyeshadows are freaking amazing. I love their eyeshadows. And some of the brushes I've used are really, really good. But this brush just really disappointed me. Like, the, the bristles seem really cheap. They don't seem well made. And they're so scratchy when you rub it on the skin. Not when you rub your eye makeup on. When you... Using this brush is very scratchy. I don't like it. It doesn't feel like a quality brush which the other brushes I've tried are quality brushes so I don't know why this one is so poor in comparison to the others. Um, I don't remember how much this was but I wouldn't rebuy it, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, yeah, I'm just not satisfied with this brush at all. Um, so that's all the products I've got to show you, I'm sorry if it was a bit long and I'm really sorry about the negativity in this video. I just wanted to share these products because they've been sitting on my desk waiting to be filmed. Um, I'm not hating on any of the brands in this uh, video. I love, the majority of these brands are brands that I freaking adore and they're some of my favourites. Um, it's just these specific products didn't work for me and I, I would like to say probably won't work for you either but maybe you guys have more skill than I do. Maybe I'm just not using them properly, I don't know. But I don't like any of these products so I won't be using any of these again. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below what the most disappointing products for you were in 2016 and let's hope that we all have a magical makeup journey in 2017 and find the best damn products. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.